Lots of despondency in the South African newspapers this morning about the climate talks just across the road from us. How do you see the talks progressing at the moment? Well, you know, negotiations cannot be concluded till the very end. And it's about give and take. And, you know, nations of the world, they do have their position, their concern, their references. So my hope is that Durban will be a success a success in operationalizing Cancun Agreement, but a success in uh, being, uh, providing an avenue to conclude uh, an integrated pro-poor new climate change regime. That's my hope. So till the very end, you can't tell. So you think it's slightly naive to read anything too early. We should really wait until, what, the early hours of Saturday morning before anything will come clear? For what I have experienced over the, the last decade in negotiation, negotiating inter intergovernmental processes, till the very last minute of the last hour of the last day, you can't tell. But I do hope that the spirit here is conducive for, you know, really building a big leap forward. So I'm still hopeful. At the moment, there seem to be some very clear lines between countries. USA and Canada are very unpopular at the moment. Do you think, is, is it as clear as that? Are they, in your experience, are these countries that are very anti-environmental or are they actually countries that do have a strong environmental streak, but maybe that's, that's not just not coming out at the moment? You know, from my experience, negotiators, they come with instruction from their government that they should maybe have this room to manoeuvre. But my hope is that in the environmental crisis that we are in, that no one will take the risk of letting things go in business as usual. We can't afford that. When we consider the lately re uh, released uh, IPCC uh, report on the, uh, the risk as, uh, attached to climate change, we must take action. So those who are just inward looking, con just considering their issues or some of the, 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 the lobby that might be more uh, you know, uh, efficient in, in, out, in reaching out to the, their government, they should have rather a global view. We must do that. And as for UNCCD, our concern is that soil is not in the agenda. While, yes, from the last meeting in Bonn, water has been put in the agenda. This is, to some extent, a bit schizophrenic. You can't get more water unless you better manage your soil. So if we know that climate change will affect us, actually is affecting us through too little and or too much water, we must all come together to better manage our land and soil in conjunction with all the other natural capital we have. So climate change must be taken seriously, but all the other related issues must be also taken into consideration. Absolutely. And what work are you doing as Executive Secretary of the UNCCD in, in Durban? What's, what's been your role over the past week? Well, to reach out to negotiators and to players here, highlighting the potential of soil and land. In fact, when we consider water scarcity, when we consider uh, the need for food security and energy for the poor, when we consider all that, indeed, indeed, soils put are the potential, the resources that we have to provide food for all, energy for all, and more water in quantity and quality for all while we are building resilience and adapting to climatic shocks. So my role here has been to outreach to negotiators, providing them elements for them not be just uh, to, to be less conservative and rather to be holistic in their considerations. That's what I mean my role and that's what we are here for today in this Land Day 5. Absolutely, and your, your, uh, your aim today in this, in this Land Day 5, as you said, is to achieve zero net land degradation. That seems quite an ambitious, ambitious aim. Is that possible? It is ambitious, but it is within our reach. Just consider that in the last three decades in the Sahel in Africa, through a number of grassroots level initiatives and movement, uh, up to six million hectares of land has been restored through what has been labelled uh, farmers manage uh, uh, natural regeneration. So, at, in the same time, we know that two billion hectares of land globally are out there, forest land, agricultural land that has been degraded, that still holds potential for restoration. When you put this in parallel with the fact that to feed two additional 
billion people by 2050, according to FAO, we will need in the developing world an additional 120 million hectares of land. Where are we going to find them? Two options. We restore land, we avoid degradation, or we encroach on our forests. So the scenario that should be a no-go for all of us is to avoid encroaching, further encroaching on our forests. That's why we must advocate and decide on the need to, for all of us, at all level of action, to agree on a zero net rate of land degradation. What does it mean? That number one, we will do all that we can to avoid degradation. That is prevention. And number two, we must offset, we must restore, we must reclaim, at least at the level of land being degraded, land that still holds potential for, for restoration. If we do that, it will have implications for poverty alleviation because the majority of the poor in the world are in the rural areas living on degraded land. The majority of those going hungry every, every day in the world, the majority of them are in the rural areas living on degraded land. Now, when you consider climate change adaptation and mitigation, this will have huge impact in adapting and mitigating climatic shocks. So that's the purpose of Land Day 5, advocating for all the international community to agree to build a land degradation neutral world. We hope that this will be one of the sustainable development goals that will be agreed upon at Rio Plus 20. It will drive synergies. It, you know, you get more of what you reward. Obviously, the system that we have today is not incentivizing synergistic approaches. We need goal. We need approaches that will drive synergistic uh, movement and integrated approaches. You mentioned Rio Plus 20. Much has been made about this, even though the dates had to be changed for the Queen's Jubilee. Um, are you expecting some real progress at Rio Plus 20? Because many people are quite cynical. They say it's just going to be a big, a big show for some of the big UN secretariats to turn up. But are you, as head of one of those, expecting some real policy changes and some real progress when all the parties arrive in Rio? You know, 19 years ago in Rio, the international community concurred and agreed on the pillars of sustainable development and on the three key pillars for the sustainable management of our environment being the three Rio conventions. Unfortunately, out of, from Rio, those pillars have been transformed into ivory towers operating in silo because the system ultimately was not driving synergies. My hope is that Rio will provide the driving force for synergies. And my hope is that it could be. I see the potential in agreeing on goal that will be one on land, the other one on the atmosphere. And obviously, two degree, no more than two degree for global warming is one of the sustainable development goals that we all agree on. We need to have one on land and one on the ocean. And these, those three goals might have the potential of driving synergistic approaches. That is my hope, that is my, my expectation. I hope that Rio Plus 20 will be a paradigm-changing summit.